I believe we are live. Hello, hello, everyone. Happy Thursday. Thursday, it's a good day. <clears throat> Sorry, excuse my voice. I got a little choked before the start or somehow. So welcome, welcome to the top line where I interview influential, brilliant thinkers like today's guest, Phil, Phil Johnson, to explore how to create a healthy perspective on our digital future uh, and the role of artificial intelligence. And I believe that we're in the process transforming from industrial revolution 4.0 to what I call it intelligence revolution 1.0. And uh, the good news is also because of these conversations, it helped me uh, with a lot of information, a lot of insights uh, through this affluent, tech affluent uh, community for my upcoming book called The Digital Mind of Tomorrow, where I discuss the digital revolution, the role of technology and how it impact us as a human being and uh, as a society as a whole. So today, I'm very excited to welcome our newest member to the community, my feature guest today, Phil, Phil Johnson. Hi, Phil. Thank you for taking the time to join us today. Isabella, hi. It's, it's my pleasure. Great. And um, before we start, just a quick feedback, uh, I mean, background introduction about uh, Phil. Phil has two decades experience as a company executive and uh, producing over a hundred, sorry, 1.5 billion revenues back then. We're talking about two decades ago. <laughs> and he also turned down two VP positions uh, in order to start what he believed is extremely important, the career that he's, do he's been doing for the past 21 years. He's been dedicating helping executives and organizations um, um, bet on themselves by developing their emotional intelligence. And what, what the program is called is the Mastermind uh, sorry, the Master of Business Leadership, and which offers members the potential for their extraordinary life filled with exponential impact and success rather than a conventional level of success. Did I do it right, Phil? <laughs> You're great. Thank you. You're Thank great. you. And today I was talking with Phil. I was so excited about the topic because I'm personally um, spiritual. I'm also religious. It doesn't contradict. And so I'm very into the topic of our consciousness. And as I'm writing the book, through research and conversations, the uh, concentration somehow just you know genuinely direct to this conversation like you just can't bypass the talk of our human being the original of our human existence and our emotional intelligence so uh, as i quoted in my book i said consciousness is human humanity's last beacon of hope and the only resources uh finding the way out um uh, Phil also quote that on his newsletter. Thank you very much. And he also had an awesome quote on his newsletter that we cannot achieve results that are beyond our current level of consciousness. And uh, I know Phil, you have something to add. We had a great conversation even before we start this talk. What do you think about this whole consciousness deal for humanity? Yeah, uh, thank you. Um... I was thinking this morning, I was putting together some thoughts um, about our discussion, and I, uh, I appreciate the opportunity to, uh, to meet with you and, and have this discussion with the audience. Uh, what I'm going to say, I want to preference, preface by saying that it's going to hopefully make our listeners uncomfortable. That's, um, it's not my intention, but I think it's the reality of of what I'm going to I'm just, I wrote it down, so I'm just going to read it to get us, get us going here. I said, the digital future we are facing, combined with the accelerating rate of global change, has put our planet at risk. We are not taking into account the fact that we have a 500 million year old Stone Age brain that does not like change. We need to be moving from the Industrial Revolution 4.0 to the Emotional Intelligence Revolution 1.0. We need to accelerate the development of our emotional intelligence in order to stop our intellectual intelligence from driving us over a cliff. 
the emotional labor required for this to occur will also raise our level of consciousness and create the inspiration of leaders needed to lead the rest of us to safety. I think after having, I've been on this path um, for the last 54 years. I turned 68 uh, a few months ago. And I've been working with executives and organizations all over the world for the last 21 years. I've dedicated my life uh, to that, um, to raise a level of emotional intelligence um, in order to raise our level of consciousness and get better results. Mm -hmm. I think we're at a tipping point as a species on the planet. Mm -hmm. And if we don't, we have a tsunami of change coming at us. Some scientists estimate um, that we could experience the equivalent of 20,000 years worth of change in this, in this century. Mm -hmm. So change has become, change is increasing at an exponential rate. And if we don't develop our emotional intelligence to deal with the anxiety that change creates in us, it will create so much drama, chaos, and conflict that it's doubtful we will be able to recover from it. Um, quite frankly, we're the virus on the planet. There isn't a single other species on the planet mm -hmm. that wouldn't be better off if we didn't exist. We have to change our trajectory as a species mm -hmm. to be able to deal with um, the digital world we're facing combined with the accelerating rate of change. Mm -hmm. um, and there's only, <clears throat> there's, only two cause, there's only two sources of motivation that will cause us to leave our comfort zone. One is pain, the other one is passion. Um, so most of the people that are willing to do the emotional labor of developing their emotional intelligence and raising their level of consciousness mm -hmm. are usually driven by pain, an urgent desire for better results than they're currently getting. And in that journey, in that process, the motivation can change from a motivation from getting away from something to moving towards something, a vision of a, a desired result. So that's kind of my, uh, my initial thoughts about uh, the importance of the conversation we're having today. Amazing. It's so important. And you emphasized it very, very well. And it kind of explained, as you mentioned, <coughs> why you've been doing this. Uh, and to to really start start from fresh to, to spread this idea to the world. And also, <coughs> yeah, I agree. And you mentioned in your newsletter that dealing with our daily challenges while continuing to ignore the root cause of those challenges is no longer enough. Yep. What is the root cause? It's, it's energy physics. It's the root cause is that we are unconscious. We're, we're only conscious about three to five percent of the time. The rest of the time, we're relying on our unconscious habits to create our behaviors and our results. Mm -hmm. So that if, if we want better results than we're currently getting, uh, we can't get those results with our existing habits. We have to develop better habits. And that requires us to leave our comfort zone. The process is called brain plasticity or neurogenesis. Uh, we can do that at any age. But whenever we leave our comfort zone, there's a part of our old lizard brain called the amygdala that doesn't want us to do that. And it's been trying to keep us safe and alive for the last 500 million years by making sure we never leave our cave. And if we do, it secretes a hormone into our bloodstream called cortisol. And that causes the executive center of our brain, our prefrontal cortex, to shut off. And we typically go into what psychologists refer to as an, an amygdala hijack. We go into fight, flight, or freeze mode. Some people lash out, some people run away, some people freeze like a deer in the headlights. And when that happens in conflict situation, it can cause people to die. And when it happens in business or personal situations, relationships die, we burn trust. 
So as an analogy, if you think of your, if your amygdala as a very frightened four-year-old child, the development of our emotional intelligence acts like a big brother or a big sister to quiet the amygdala response down and better enable us to feel the anxiety that change and innovation creates in us and move through it towards the vision of our desired results as opposed to allowing that anxiety to keep us trapped in our comfort zone. Does that make, um, does that make sense? Yeah, a lot of sense. It seems like it's a lot to do with psychology and also physical, biological it's it's um yeah we have there's significant resistance we have significant resistance to change both from a biological and a sociological point of view um we're much more concerned about what might be trying to eat us and what might be trying to help us we're much more frightened about change and we really need to be developing our emotional intelligence to be able to feel the anxiety that gets created in us when we're facing change and move through that anxiety, move through that fear, not allow that fear to control us. The development of emotional intelligence doesn't eliminate fear. Fear is not the enemy. What it does is it allows us to feel the fear, recognize the fear, and move through the fear towards what it is we're trying to achieve as opposed to allowing that fear to control us. You see, if we're not willing to change, mm -hmm. the only other alternative we have is to try and use some type of position-based power to control and manipulate others to get them to change. And unfortunately, that's what we've been doing for a very, very long time. Mm -hmm. And that's why the current level of employee engagement worldwide according to Gallup, is around 13%. Low levels of employee engagement is costing the U.S. economy alone over a trillion dollars a year. People don't feel safe. Um, they're working in toxic environments. Um, and it really, they don't feel safe to take risks. They don't feel safe to leave their comfort zone. And they don't have the emotional intelligence to ward off the attempts at control and manipulation that people in positions of power unconsciously try to exert to get them to change. So it's a, um, getting back to your question, mm -hmm. the underlying root cause is we need to learn to stop giving away our energy to others. And when we learn to stop giving away our energy to others, um, that, that journey, that process, is what develops emotional intelligence, raises our level of consciousness, and inspires us to become more inspirational leaders. Mm -hmm. See, we can, we can sense whether somebody's trying to help us or hurt us. Mm -hmm. That's why we can, we can walk into a room yes. and sense the energy in the room. We can have a conversation with somebody and sense whether they're being real or not. We have, and that's because we have these specialized brain cells in our prefrontal cortex that scientists call mirror neurons. Mm -hmm. And I call, quite frankly, I call them bullshit meters. You can't fake being authentic. Mm -hmm. um, and we've had to develop the ability to sense that in other people because we live in, we live in society. We live in, we live in groups. Um, so it, it becomes really important to develop our emotional intelligence so that we can lower our walls, so that we can become less resistant, judgmental, and attached to outcome, so that we can demonstrate trustability. Mm -hmm. We can't force somebody to trust us, but if we demonstrate our trustworthiness, mm -hmm. that can inspire them to want to, to trust us. And when we lower our walls, um, people pick up on that. People get a sense that you're being real. That you get a, um, they get a sense that you're not trying to hurt them. You're trying to you're trying to help them. You're trying to be of service. Uh, let me give you a, a great example of that. Mm -hmm. One of the largest companies in the world, doing over a trillion dollars a year in sales, mm -hmm. is Apple. Mm -hmm. And their whole hiring process 
is focused on the search for people with above average levels of emotional intelligence. They're far less interested, they're far less concerned about what you know about their products and services. They can teach you that. Mm -hmm. What they're really looking for is emotional intelligence. That's why when you walk into an Apple store, mm -hmm. that energy you feel mm -hmm. is, is an example of a more emotionally intelligent environment. They're not trying to sell you anything. They're trying to understand your pain and, if possible, serve you. Mm -hmm. Whether you buy anything or not is secondary. They want you to have a great experience. Maybe you'll tell your friends and maybe they'll tell their friends. Right. So, so the development of emotional intelligence is becoming the future of organizational development. More and more companies are hiring, promoting, and developing emotional intelligence. I'm curious to hear from you, in your opinion, uh, the term uh, emotional intelligence, how do you understand it in the sense of uh, is it scientific or is it spiritual or both? It's getting knowledgeable, it's, it's becoming more conscious. Um, it's the ability to feel the fear that change and innovation creates in us, acknowledge it, and move through it towards where it is we're trying to achieve the, the vision of our desired results, as opposed to allowing that fear to control us, which the majority of the population on the planet does. We're allowing our fear to control us. Yeah. Um, that's why every most of what you read in the news or see on, see on TV or anything, it's, mm -hmm. it's designed to scare us. It's designed to keep us mm -hmm. stuck, keep us trapped in our comfort zone. And we lack the emotional intelligence to acknowledge and move through that fear. Absolutely. I guess what I meant to ask as a follow-up question is, it's so important, so how people can really possess that emotional or improve their emotional intelligence? Um, because we've been talking about the benefits and how critical it is for the society, for individual, for organization. How, where do we start? Yeah, uh, the first place to start is, um, what do you want? It's developing an emotional connection with a with the vision of a desired result you want to achieve. And that that emotional connection becomes the motivation or the fuel for the journey. <laughs> um, <clears throat> without that, um, you won't be willing to do the emotional labor that the development of emotional intelligence requires. So we need to learn the habits of not giving away our energy. Let me give an example of what I mean. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the one of the master of business leadership mm -hmm. habits is called authentic listening, and what it means is um, how somebody feels about you, whether they like you or whether they don't, mm -hmm. has nothing to do with you. It has to do with what's going on inside of the other person. So with how you feel about yourself is dependent on how somebody feels about you. <laughs> Who's running your life? You or them? Mm -hmm. It's them, right? Mm -hmm. You're giving away your energy to that other person to determine how you should feel about yourself. If they like you, then you like you. If they don't like you, then you don't like you. If you don't get a lot of likes on social media, or not a boy or not a girl, then your feeling of your your self confidence is diminished. Is that so that's everyone? one. Is that for everyone? Or is what? Is that for everyone? They define themselves based on opinion from others. Sure, a lot of people do. Why you know, the people they were driven a lot of time by ego based fear. We want to have a really nice looking car or a nice job or a nice title. Biological flaw or well, it, is there any it's, way it's, to overcome that? Yeah, by developing your emotional intelligence. You see, our ego, our ego wants us to feel better than or less than others. Yes. 
I have a better car, I'm taller, I'm prettier, I'm wealthier, I have a better job, I have a better title than you do. It wants us to feel better than or less than others, mm -hmm. but it never wants us to feel equal. Uh, so the more we develop our emotions, it never wants us to be in the present moment. It wants us to be focusing on future or past, but never the present moment. Mm -hmm. And the present moment is all that's real. The present moment is all that exists for everybody on the planet. Mm -hmm. The future will never exist. The mm -hmm. past doesn't exist. The only time we can take an action and generate a result is in the present moment. And the more present you are in the moment, the more influential you are in the moment. Amazing. the better your results yeah. so if you think about it we're hardly ever focused on the present moment we're thinking about the next thing on our to-do list yes. or what went wrong yesterday or this morning um, and that's our ego's attempt to try and scare us into staying in our in our comfort zone right I actually see three tips already uh, in order for us to on a direction to improve our emotional intelligence. One is find our passion, right? To find out what do you really want to do. Second is to be at the present moment, be mindful, enjoy what you're doing at the moment. And the third one, oh, I need to be present. The third one is you mentioned something, um, ego, the ego. We need to deal with our ego. Yeah, the ego is um, the ego's the ego has outlived its usefulness. The ego has been part of our evolution as a species, mm -hmm. but uh, it's it's like our appendix. It no longer serves a useful function. Um, so developing our most people think they're their cars or they're their jobs or they're their titles, whatever their label is they put on themselves. Yes, right and. If that's not true, the development of our emotional intelligence actually enables us to distance ourselves from our ego so that our ego is always going to be generating, trying to generate that fear, but we can watch what our ego is doing from a distance, recognize it and say, you know, I may be scared, but it's not going to stop me from moving in the direction that I want to, that I want to go in. Right. You see, if we're, if we're attached to our ego, if we feel we're our job or our car or whatever label we want to, we want to put on ourselves, then that, that label owns us. Mm -hmm. That label owns us. Yes. Um, and it becomes much more difficult to do the emotional labor of leaving our comfort zone. And over time, we start focusing more and more on trying to control and manipulate others to get them to change because we're unwilling to change. Is that and that's what creates the drama, chaos, and conflict. That's what creates the toxic environments mm -hmm. that leads to low levels of engagement. The chaotic, right? we're having today is that also why back to your first tips to develop emotional intelligence about find your true passion it's also that's the optical to pre to f stop people from really pursuing what they're love or they're uh, engaging and what they really love because their ego stands in the way with their labels now let me um let me give you another analogy um The awakening process is an ongoing, never-ending process. Um, let me give you an example of the difference between intellectual intelligence and emotional intelligence mm -hmm. and how it impacts our behavior and our results. Mm -hmm. Would you rather have $10,000 a day for 31 days mm -hmm. or a penny that doubles every day for 31 days? <laughs> so the first, in the first example, that's our ability to do intellectual labor is largely genetic, it's largely fixed. So if you had $10,000 a day for 31 days, that would be $310,000. If you doubled a penny every day for 31 days, you'd have $5.7 million, sorry, $10.7 million. Mm -hmm. um, and if you continued the example, after 40 days, you'd have over 5 billion, over 50 days, you'd have over 5 trillion. 
So the point is the development of emotional intelligence is meant to work with our intellectual intelligence and has a huge, massive multiplier effect on, our, on the results we're able to generate. So in the emotion, see, development of emotional intelligence is an experiential process that anybody can do. Mm -hmm. That differs from an intellectual intelligence which is largely genetic. Not everybody can have 160 IQ. Mm -hmm. But anybody and everybody can be developing their emotional intelligence by doing the emotional labor of, of moving outside of their comfort zone and learning how to stop giving away their energy to others. See, when you're giving, let me just, um, let me explain the journey just a little bit. So day one on the, on the emotional intelligence journey, you've got a penny. Day two, you've got two pennies. Day three, you've got four pennies. Mm -hmm. Day 31, you've got $10.7 million. Mm -hmm. The point is it doesn't take any more effort to go from day 30 to day 31 than it did to go from day one to day two. Mm -hmm. But it's a process. So in the beginning, you're doing a lot of work for little because you don't know what you don't know. Later on, it looks like you're doing a little work for a lot, but it's because of the journey you've been on. There are organizations and executives I've been working with for over 12 years mm -hmm. because the ROI keeps getting greater and greater and greater and greater as they do the emotional labor of developing their emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. And by the way, a number of... The Number of those individuals are on this on this uh, podcast. <laughs> hi, hi, everyone! <laughs> Thanks to Phil. <laughs> well, what's the biggest obstacles when among those you you've helped organizations or individuals when they try to uh, break through to develop or improve their emotional intelligence? Um, they lack. A desired result, their, their desired result is weaker than their fear. You need to have a, you need to have an outcome you're trying to achieve, an emotional connection to an outcome you're trying to achieve mm -hmm. that's stronger than the fear that's going to get generated along the way. So think big. Think boldly. <sighs> yeah, um... Whatever, whatever it is, you you've got to you've got to develop it's it's you've got to develop an emotional connection. You're in an emotional why uh, for why you're doing whatever you're doing. It has to be really important to you. Whatever, whatever it is, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what it is, but it that emotional connection becomes the driver. It becomes the motivation that will pull you out of your comfort zone and through the fear that gets created by our 500 million year old brain. So we, we, we need that fuel, we need that motivation to feel the fear mm -hmm. and move through it and not let that fear stop us, not let that fear control us. To drag us down. It sounds like the emotional desire that drives you to reach this the, the destination is the hardest thing to do is it um from everything you try to explain it's it's, it's not it's not hard but most people see lots of people most people want better results than they're currently getting in some way in some aspects of their life but if they don't have that emotional connection to that result mm -hmm. if there isn't an emotional connection to achieving that result mm -hmm. you won't be willing to leave your comfort zone to go make it happen so that's the difference the thing that all emotionally intelligent people have in common is a strong emotional connection with something they're trying to achieve that's greater than the fear that gets created in the process. Mm -hmm. if, see, if anybody tells you they're not scared, they're, they're out of touch with their emotions. Fear is not a bad thing. It's a feeling. 
it's a it's yeah it's an emotion mm -hmm. um but it's when we deny it unconsciously mm -hmm. um that it that it that it can that it can control us and it turns us in from trying to stops us from trying to serve mm -hmm. to trying to control others mm, i love that that's a good it's fear. It's, mm -hmm. it's fear it's fear it's fear comes always fear. always always it's ego-based fear and the thing is that we're we're unconscious of it for the most part is in our subconscious well as we get close to to the end of the question i do want to circle back a little bit to this how emotional intelligence is tied to our today's digital world the fast-paced technology empowered digital world mm -hmm. um you also mentioned that you see uh, this accelerating rate of global change with technology what are the impact or consequences you see uh, in today's digital world and how emotional intelligence and self-awareness consciousness play a goal uh, a role in this process our accelerating digital world isn't the enemy <laughs> it's, it's not a bad thing um, it's it's our 500 billion year old brain that tries to block change. Mm -hmm. um, and as I was saying, we have a literally a change is increasing at an exponential rate. Right. And it's creating a lot of fear. It's creating a lot, it's creating a lot of drama, chaos, and conflict. And we need to develop the emotional intelligence to stop that fear from controlling our actions so that we can we can make better choices and embrace the accelerating rate of change uh, that we're, we're we're experiencing how that connect with consciousness consciousness allows us to do that consciousness allows us to feel to distance ourselves from our fear consciousness does not eliminate fear mm -hmm. uh, consciousness allows us to say hey i'm scared to death <laughs> I'm really worried, mm -hmm. but I'm not going to let that. I'm not going to let my fear stop me from moving in the direction that I that I want to. I want to move in. See, most of us allow our fear to stop us right. from changing, from growing, from evolving, right. both as individuals and as organizations. So, I mean, think about it. I'm sure a lot of your listeners. <laughs> that are going through or have gone through organizational change can relate to what a root canal that is within their organization and how uh, so many people try to derail change initiatives. Mm -hmm. And that gets back to that whole lizard brain, fear. They don't want to rock the boat. They don't want to change the status quo. They would rather die than change. They would rather destroy the organization than change. Mm -hmm. They think that staying within their comfort zone is safety, where in reality, the worst possible thing we can do, especially during times of rapid and accelerating change, is to refuse to leave our comfort zone. Yet that's what happens when we allow, our, when we allow the lack of emotional intelligence mm -hmm. to control us. Absolutely. So in essence, emotional intelligence, it's a tool for us to, to arm us to deal with the fast changing world. And that wouldn't be done without conscious. Conscious enable us to be able to leverage the tool of emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence is more than a tool. It's a critical part of our development that's missing. See, our educational system has failed us. And our employment system has failed us mm -hmm. because it's relied primarily on our ability to do intellectual labor. And it's done little or nothing to develop our emotional intelligence. So there's a, there's a critical part of our development mm -hmm. that we never got. Developed. Uh, <laughs> we, we never got developed. And now with the accelerating rate of global change, we need that more than ever. I agree. 
I agree. It's part of what makes us a, as a human. Correct. And if you if you trace down to the end, that's consciousness. Correct. Awesome. Correct. As we as we learn to combine our intellectual and emotional intelligence,、yes. not only do we get significantly better results, but we become more conscious、mm-hmm. of what's going on in us、mm-hmm. and around us. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, thank you so much, Phil. You give us so much advice and lots of examples、um, in real case scenario, especially that Apple emotional hiring process. Everyone, <laughs> that's directly, I believe, tied to many of individuals that is trying to find a way out、um, in this constantly changing vibe. So, thanks so much, and thank you all again, my dear audience. A lot of them are coming from Phil. Thank you so much for helping. Helping me getting this、uh, session out to the people that needs it.、Um, I wish everyone a wonderful rest of the week. Happy early weekend! It's Thursday already, and I will see you all at the next one. Thank you very much again, Phil, for joining us. Take care, everyone. My, my pleasure.